Hey there, welcome back to our channel. Let's continue with our episode. In the previous episode, we have created our order using Kafka, right? And we can see while we are creating the order, it is getting deducted the desired uh, stock quantity from the catalog. So far, everything is going good. All the services, order, catalog, and auth services doing well, all right? So only one thing is missing here, collecting the payment, right? So without collect the payment, we cannot create the order. Today we are going to create a very teeny tiny microservice. It's called payment service. And this microservice will be not going to have any kind of database because it's not required at all, right? So this is not mandatory always while you are creating uh, your microservice, you need to create the database. It's based on the use case. So if you if you want to know how these things gonna work or maybe how, why, why we are making a lot of microservices. Let's say you can see like in a, here we have how many? Here we have six microservices. Maybe you are thinking like, hey Jay, we are really creating a lot of microservices. That's true. Maybe some, uh, some systems may need it like uh, segregation of certain components, but this is not mandatory always to, to create a lot of microservices. So based on your use case, maybe order service can have the payment uh, feature as well as, right? Maybe order service, you can combine order and payment service together. But again, you can see while it comes to uh, integrate a new payment gateway or new payment integration, right? Then then you need to touch the order service. So there are no any segregation, right? So you are, you are not supposed to touch the order service. So order service has to be deployed independently. This, this is very common while e-commerce companies are not relying on only one payment gateway because there are, there are certain uh, drawbacks or there are downtimes or there. That's why they just try to keep it the payment payment service specifically segregated to a different microservice. So they can integrate as many as the payment gateway and they can they can have a low, lot of like maybe more observability monitoring. So this is a crucial part of the user journey because rest of other part, you know, you can see uh, here, there are no any risk like let's say auto, auto services can have little bit risk where security is a little bit concerned, but you can see order and the catalog service is not that much concerned because there are less security or maybe less monitoring also it can be possible but in the payment service it's a little bit crucial component of, of the whole system so now let's try to have a look how payment services can work with the payment gateway to understand this scenario let's try to have a look at this diagram all right so i know all these diagrams are really boring but still if we take the help of the diagram then maybe we'll be able to understand very quickly so while our user will come to our platform, then in the first page, we can see the product details, right? So where you can, where user can add the cart, add the item to the cart, and they can proceed further to create the order. So as we have seen in our previous episode, we have created the order and then we are receiving some kind of order ID. The same thing is gonna happen with the front end as well as. Once the front end is going to create the order, then it will receive the order ID. That order ID will, we will provide to the payment service. Then payment service is going to create the payment, and it is going to send some kind of parameter or maybe a form of URL. And those things we are going to present right from the front end to a dedicated web page where user can see the uh, the card inputs or maybe bank details like where they can enter. And that, that page is going to communicate with our payment gateway to collect the payment. And there, there upon successful response of the payment gateway, it will, it will just like confirm to the user gonna say, hey, we have collected your payment. Now, now we can we can proceed ahead to the order, right? And then this space will be communicate with our front end again, right? To to make sure like this payment is went through correctly. Then front end will be again send it back that particular response to our payment service. Then payment service will confirm with the payment gateway, right? Uh, to to get to know the correct status, right? So those are the things going to happen in behind the scene. So customer no need to wait to uh, payment service to communicate with the payment provider, etc. So here itself, the customer will be able to see the success response that is provided from the payment gateway. So right now you can see, we have a very, very simplified like, you know, mechanism, right? So front end going to create the payment, then it will going to display in the web page and we can, we can get the confirmation. But as look as this simple, it is not that simple as well as, right? So there are, there are a lot of complexity behind the scene. So let's try to discuss all this complexity first. So there are two types of integration we can follow, right? So based on payment gateway or based on like provider, but in our case, we are going to use the Stripe because the Stripe is widely available in the, around the world. So you developers can easily onboard with the Stripe and you can implement like whatever you are, you are going to integrate in your payment, right? And rest of other payment gateways also available, let's say ADN 
or maybe you can go with like uh, maybe some sort of uh, PayPal. But uh, onboarding is a little bit tricky right there. So that's why we, we thought the Stripe is a kind of convenient candidate for us to, to go with this service. So right now you can see if the payment provider we are going with the integration, then first one is the inbuilt integration where we have a very less, uh, you can say, um, control on the customizing the payment UI and the look and feel and etc. And there are some constraints also there, like you know, uh, all the controls you need to leave it to the uh, payment gateway. And the second one is the custom API integration, right? So where we can have a full freedom of customizing our UI and etc. That's right. But in this custom API integration, you need to do some extra work, and from the coding side, you need to you need to like in the from front end side also, you need to have some custom integrations. That is by by following the documentation of the payment gateway. And the backend side also you need to handle accordingly. Now let's discuss about the inbuilt integration. In the inbuilt integration, while our payment service is going to receive a re request from our front end to create a payment, then payment service is going to create a session, right? And in that session, what we need to do, we need to provide our amount, order ID, success, and the failure URL, right? So because as soon as we are going with this inbuilt integration, right, this one, then we are going to lose the control from our application because the payment provider are going to take care of everything. Because as I said, in the inbuilt integration, we, we don't have enough freedom to, to make some changes or maybe control, right? So then as a response from the payment provider, right, the, the session response, it will going to give you some kind of URL. That URL, what we need to do, our payment service, it's going to uh, respond back to the front end. Then front end going to present that particular URL in the web page. You can see as soon as we are presenting that URL, we will be going to lose the connection from that particular page because we don't have any control. So now, now from here, payment gateway going to take care from here, payment gateway where it will be collect some kind of user information, maybe user, user email or maybe card details, all right? Contact number, address, it, it depends on like which country you are making the payment or based on its um, uh, legal system and etc. Then, then based on that, right, once you are, you are forwarding or once you are entering all this information, then payment provider like payment gateway again, make a request to uh, like upon successful or failure, it'll going to give to that particular web page. So, and right now, based on this success and failure URL, based on the, the payment response that is coming from our bank, right, it is going to spin that particular endpoint for our website. Then our website responsibility is to uh, communicate again to the payment service. Can I say, hey, we have received this uh, request. Now you can go ahead and verify or whatever you can do, like, you know, send a broker message or uh, you can move forward. But our client will not wait, like our customer will not wait for that particular uh, request because customer already have received this response from, from here, right? As soon as it is going to be success, then we are going to show like, you know, hey, your payment was successful. And if it is going to fail, all right, then we are going to say, hey, we are, we are, Okay, this is success. This is again success. All right, so failure. So upon the failure response, then we are going to say, "Hey, oops, your payment was not successful. Can we make it again?" Right? So we can we can do that. So now you can see the in the inbuilt feature we don't have much more um, flexibility, right? So at least uh, we can directly the, the collect the payment, then we can uh, show it accordingly. But the inbuilt way also we can get this job done, right? Though we don't have any any flexibility, so still we can get the job done, right? And now let's discuss about the custom API integration. In the custom API integration, while our payment service is going to receive the request from our front end to create payment, then payment service is going to create the payment right here in the, uh, the payment gateway, right? This time it is not going to create the payment session, right? And while we are going to create the payment, then we are, what we are going to do, we, are, we don't need to provide this success and the failure URL at all. So this time, because we are following the custom integration, so we need to, we will be going to build our UI based on the uh, payment provider's uh, documentation, right? So for front end side, it is going to give some kind of like in you know, a library where maybe we can utilize all of these uh, principles and we can build a kind of beautiful, um, uh, the look and feel or something like that match on our website team, right? So now you can see here, while we are, follow the, we are following the custom API integration, then we will receive some kind of secret, right, in response. So this is not going to be a session. It's a going, going to be, you can say, payment intent, as an example. So while the payment intent has been created, then we are received some kind of the payment intent secret. That secret we are going to provide to our front end, 
And this time what's gonna happen, right? This time we'll be having full control of that particular web page. You can say we are we are going to display UI based on that particular secret, right? Using the public key, and we will be designing a web page right, where we are going to give some um, fields for the card or net banking and etc. Along with the total amount, how much money we are going to charge, right? In the session response, right? In the in the first one, the inbuilt integration one. That that one we need to provide the item details as well as right. So how what are the items where where uh, the customer are buying right and uh, how much total amount and everything we need to pass it to the premium provider. But in the custom API we no need to provide all of the like an you know, item details. Only we need to just provide total amount how much we are going to source. So right now you can see we have a full control. So while our this particular web, web page is coming going to communicate with our payment provider then payment provider is going to send a response back to this web page then web page we can add some logic like your payment was successful or failure we can show it back and we can call uh, we can call to the payment service as well as based on that particular response right I'm gonna say hey please verify this payment has been made by customer whether it, it was successful or failure all right and again we can just like display some kind of message your your payment, your card was searched, but we have not received the money. Maybe it's going to be pending or something. We can we can have full control. All right. So now we understood how inbuilt integration and custom API integration is gonna work, right? In the body scenario, we have collect the amount instantly. But there are some advanced concepts also there, right? So let's try to understand all these advanced mechanisms, right? Sometimes we cannot search the card instantly, right? Then maybe we have some buffer time, let's say after two days or three days, you, we are going to source the card. This is often happening with the, with, with the hotel or maybe some booking, right? So let's say maybe maybe with the flight also sometimes, right? And and some of the payment gateways are providing like, you know, maybe book now, pay later, right? So all those scenarios, what we are going to do, we are, uh, we are simply doing the same thing, but the provider, payment provider, what it is doing, instead of sourcing the card, it is like, sending a kind of authorization request to the bank gonna say hey we are try we are going to source this card let's say hundred dollar maybe after three days um please the grant the approval all right so then bank is granting the approval based on credential by looking at the card expiry date that uh, while we're going to start that particular transaction if that the card is going to expire uh, before that or not and looking at like how much money already it's been there in the uh, user uh, card and etc. All right. Based on all of these scenarios, bank is now going to give a kind of grant approval, right? Then our payment provider again is sending back the same response, gonna say, "Hey, yeah, your payment was successful. Though we have not charged the card, we have authorized the card, right?" Then similar concepts are happening to the payment service, and payment service is going to uh, uh, verify this that particular authorization with the payment provider, right? Then we can move on. So now question is how our payment service will get to know after three days we have received the payment or not. So in that case, you can see right after signing the grant approval, right? So the payment provider will be initiate that capture fund request after three days. Maybe from the payment provider side, they're going to run some kind of cron job, right? As soon as we are like, you know, uh, creating the authorization request right there, right? Then upon receive the funds from the bank, right? then payments, payment provider will send some kind of notification to our payment service. So what we are going to do, we are, we are going to expose some kind of endpoint. So as soon as we are going to integrate our payment provider there in their dashboard, we have to set that particular endpoint as a kind of webhook, uh, uh, webhook request endpoint, right? So, and all of this, uh, all of this like, you know, notification, it can be possible with the help of that webhook, like as soon as it is receiving the grant approval, then also they are going to send a notification. Then as soon as they are like, you know, receiving the funds from the bank, then also they are going to send a response to the, uh, to our webhook notification. So based on that notification from our payment service, we can call our broker service to update the order uh, payment status, right? So now you understood like how this whole thing's gonna work. I know it was a little bit boring, but still like this is really essential to understand. Now let's jump into the source code and we are going to apply all of these things like whatever we have discussed right there, but definitely we are not going to uh, implement this inbuilt integration. This is really very basic integration, right? And we are going to use the custom API integrations where we are going to create some kind of secret and we will be going to build some kind of maybe uh, a very uh, simplified uh, UI for our front end to just to, to collect the payment or where we are going to collect uh, like maybe entire the card information and etc. 
and upon successful uh, uh, the response from our payment gateway, then we are going to call our payment service to to make sure we're we're successfully powering that the message broker call. There are a lot of hunts gonna happen. Let's try to jump into the source code.